Uh, kicking things off now, um, let me just touch briefly on Cobra Kai Season 4, right? Um, this is a show that I have been, you know, thoroughly enjoyed. I actually covered the third season um, last year. I came late to it as well, too. So, you know, it's kind of ironic that, you know, the same thing, like, you know, history repeats itself, right? So, um, but yeah, but this this was one that, you know, I, I just need to see, right? Even though it came out on Holy SD uh, back in, you know, 2021, right? And what it's about, in a nutshell, it just continues the food adventures of rivals to friends, kind of, or frenemies, if you want to call it that. Yes. Um, Daniel LaRusso, played once again by um, Ralph Macchio, and Johnny Lawrence, played by William Zabka, right? So they, they, they find themselves, you know, well, you know, just slight spoiler from where the last season ended off, you know, basically um, uniting both um, dojos, right? Mm-hmm. So Daniel, you know, represents um, Miyagi Do, and Johnny Lawrence represents Eagle Fist, right? And yeah, there's a there's a sorry Eagle Fang, right? And there's a nice little joke into you know uh, Eagles don't have fangs, they have talons, right? But you know, right, right. It's, it's you know Johnny's you know ego, and you know I'm about the '80s, man. It's about kicking ass, man. So that's what it is, right? So it's like Eagle Fang because it sounds threatening, right? But yeah, uh, they they kind of find themselves forming this this um this union. Because, well, basically, Johnny just got ousted from, you know, um, Cobra Kai, which he pretty much kind of continued running after his uh, his mentor was presumed, well, not dead, but just kind of, like, moved on. Uh. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, he actually came back, and that would be John Kreese, right, played by Martin Cove, right? And what I love about this show, just, just right off the bat, is that it's the actual actors from the original movies yeah. themselves showing back yeah, up, right? Yeah, they bring back everybody, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, yeah, as, yeah. I say, as, as I say, I still are waiting for the recent one. Yeah, right? they keep saying that um that that they think it could work yeah, to bring in Hillary Swank to right. bring in that, Yeah, that. I was I was thinking that too. Like you know, yeah. the sky's the limit now. You know what I mean? Right. Like why not? And <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of weird to me that um like okay, so slight slight little detour here, right? So I believe that the Karate Kid trilogy, right? That's the original one with um Pat Morita, rest in peace, yeah. and uh, Ralph Macchio, right? They're out, but it's almost like. So I'm the next Karate Kid from '94 okay. with Hilary Swank. Yeah. Like, where, yeah. where is that? Is that part of? Is is that canon? Is is that like removed from it? No. Well, they Why? say it is canon. So I mean, it's just for them to figure out, I guess, how to put that piece in because that's. I mean, that I think that's what's surprising about this show, at least to me, is how well these pieces are fitting together. If you told me that this could make a good television series, I would say never. Right. But. Right. They've been doing such a, the writing is really good. They've been doing such a good job of bringing these people in in a realistic fashion and not just a fan service kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I think the this, this smart core conceit is, is one of the best versions of, of, you know, this kind of weird nostalgia kick we are nowadays, right? Like, yes. we have been on a nostalgia kick for a while, but like it, it gone into hyper, hyper hmm. focus in the last few years. And this is one of the examples of how to do this, you know, have it be Agreed. very self reflective. You know, yeah. you know, you know, you're criticizing the past. You, you do a good, good eye aspect of that now. Um, instead of like something else obnoxious, or say Ghostbusters. Yes, I'm not like yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> you know, but it's it's like that. You know, it, it, how what what to do with the material and how to how to you know you know go back to it. Now. Um, in that way. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, agreed, agreed. Yeah, yeah. So um, speaking of um characters returning um, all right. So a little confession here. Um, I actually have not seen Karate Kid Part Three. Reason being is right, yeah. that um, is that I there, there was there was this okay so a little story time yeah, right that's, story that's, time that's the one that's the one with the most lore eh? like is yes. the weirdest yes. one because like what yeah. there's all of this there's all of this bullshit in it like, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's so, trying right. very hard to be more than it needs to be okay 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 all right <laughs> but uh, my my reasoning is that um, I remember this there was this bookstore in um, on Henry Street in Port of Spain and uh, they actually had. The, the actual movie novelized so i was like okay well let me just grab that because i wasn't because i remember um like on local tv the only karate kid that ever showed was uh was part two right right, right. Um, one i would see years later on cable and well three you know i just had the books so i was like all right i know what's going on now but i didn't know who was casted as what right i just knew the, the villain right yeah. so um yeah the villain in that one shows up terry silver right. who is played right. by none other than thomas Ian Griffith. Oh, yeah. I was, when I um, saw him, I'm, I was like, what? I, I used to love all his cheesy action movies back in the day. Right. Good thing you bring up that too, because yeah, if, if you're a fan of cheesy 90s action movies, you know yeah. this name. You know this Absolutely. name. Absolutely. Oh. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't forget to mention too. I might, I might as well mention this, right? So Ikarita actually brings up Cynthia Rotrock. Right. I when I heard that a clap, I yeah. was like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Give give her give her, her flowers while she's still alive. Damn it. She, yeah, it's so it's so um I mean when you think of what she was to that era in terms of female action star, yeah. there was nobody else. And I yeah. find it's so weird to me she doesn't get that kind of forward. Agreed, yeah. agreed. Um well well okay. Well I know there's this um there's this uh, home media distributor called Vinegar Syndrome. They actually have a few of her movies out. That's um, uh, Martial Law and Tiger Claws. I believe she was in it as well. So right. I hope with you know with those releases that more people are aware of her, right? But I just like just mention quickly. I just love the fact that they actually brought it up, right? Because yeah, what happens is that well, yeah, Terry returns now and teams up with John. Well, actually, John reaches out to Terry. So now they 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 run in Cobra Kai. You know what I mean? And you know it's all about that whole aggression thing. You know, strike yeah. first, strike hard, and all that that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, well, you know, um, Daniel and Johnny basically have to, well, it's basically like the students kind of like working together, but at the same time, they're kind of learning from each other. So, you know, Daniel's style is, you know, the same thing with Miyagi is all about defense and Johnny's all about off, um, offense, right? So it's all, it's, it's kind of like just them kind of learning from each other yeah. and the, the students having to kind of learn from both, right? Um, there's a lot more emphasis put on um, Samantha, that would be Daniel's um, daughter. So yeah, she's part of it as well too. She 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 still um dating Miguel, you know, who wasn't in the last well, he was in the last season, but he was kind of out of action because he got hurt during this really kick ass fight in a school in in in, in the actual school right, itself. Finale, yeah. Right. yeah, love that finale by the way, right? And yeah, it's just basically all favorite characters kind of coming back together, but now well, you know, Johnny doesn't even know who Terry is, but Daniel knew who Terry is because yeah, um Terry was the one who was just pretty much kind of pushing Daniel in Karate Kid Part 3. I forgot that, but Attack for the Show offers some flashbacks. And it's like really like grueling like um, training that Daniel had to go through. Now. So he knows just how bad Terry is, right? And then the show itself, well, this show itself really sets up just how this how villainous <laughs> Terry is, though, because, you know, you're just thinking, oh, these guys are old and, you know, they just, their, their ideals are just outdated. So, I mean, we could just kind of watch them and laugh. But no, like, like Terry, Terry's a really smart dude, right? You know what I mean? And he just, yeah, he just pulling, he, he basically the puppet master in this whole thing. I don't want to spoil anything beyond that. But yeah, he pulls some strings, but it's like, jeez, but you know what I mean? But yeah, essentially, it's just, you know, our our heroes, well, sorry, I should say Daniel and Johnny and their, their, um, their students basically having to work together, right? And of course, there's an all valley tournament that shows up because you must have an all valley tournament. And now it's just these three schools basically vying for, well, yeah, the the the, the main title and whatnot, right? Oh, and I forgot to mention last thing last. Um, there's also for the first time ever, um, an an all female section now. So that will include. So now Samantha's roped into that. But then also another favorite character of mine, um, Tori Nichols. This will be play, um, played by um, Pete and List, right? Um, both of them are rivals, actually, right? But you, you actually learn a little bit more about Tori and kind of what motivates her as well, too, right? So you kind of see where their rivalry takes them, right? And I'll stop there. So uh, just getting the obvious out of the way, this is yet another solid season of Cobra Kai. Um, I was just surprised at how much I was I was enjoying this because, you know, I was just thinking, all right, fourth season in, you know. Right. You know, it might be yeah. as good as, like, yeah. how it was before. But I was like, nah, like, everything just moves um, smoothly. And this is, like, you know, one of the biggest strengths of the show itself, right? How, not quickly, but it just moves at such a steady pace. Um, it will roughly take, like, about a five hours since it's been true, though. But it doesn't feel like it's bogged down with a bunch of, like, fat and, you know, um, yeah. padding and all that kind of stuff. It just moves at this steady pace. Um, there's a lot of great moments, a lot of great character moments, character building, you know. Um, you know, just just a lot of great stuff in it as well, too. And no, it's not about action. It's not about, you know, asking and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, it's there. But it's just mainly about the characters and the motivations and what kind of gets them from point A to point B right um everybody shines in this as far as i could see um especially like william zabka do i I just think with with because really and truly the show is about him it's about john right daniel just kind of show up you know (laughs) because he's in this universe right but it's really johnny's story though and i love how they explore they expanded it even further um especially with his relationship with uh, miguel's uh, mom right because they they go into that a little bit more um actually miguel is now trying to 
come to terms with the fact that yeah, my my, my sense is due to my mom, right? So you know, but yeah, there's some stuff going on with Miguel as well too that the show explores as well. Well, I, for, I, I forgot to mention too. Um, this is the dude that's going to play um Blue Beetle Man in the you know the, okay. the movie of the nice. same name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was I was thinking the person I was thinking of um this kid. He I was thinking he's a good Miles Morales, no? The black kid they have in the season. Uh, oh um, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Speak, speaking yeah. of that kid, right? That is yeah. Dallas Dupree um, Young, right. Kenny Payne, right? I did not see this. Uh, like, these, he's a new character brought into this, right? Right. But what it did with him was 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 excellent, in my opinion, because w- really why he's here is that you have to give well um, Daniel's son, Daniel's son, right? Haha, <laughs> right? Yeah, right, right. Um, <laughs> right. You know, a little something for him to do now because um, you know, it's 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 always kind of centered on um on Samantha, right? You know, Sam Samantha just doing, you know, wanting to be as good as Daniel and wanting to live up to, you know, the Miyagi do, you know, name and all that kind of stuff, right? But I I'm glad that they brought in this new character here because yeah, it kinda of gives um, you know, the you know, the brother something to do now. And what I like too is that they well, slight spoiler, they actually frame him as the bully, right? You know, if it's one long, long recurring thread in the show is well, bullying, right? And how you respond to it, right? So yeah, it kinda comes down to the fact that, well, um, you know, the son, Anthony, that's his name. Um, yeah, he's the bully, right? Yeah. And I could be wrong, but I swear, like, I don't know if they cast somebody new to play him though, but like he looked a little different from way um like the kind of chubby ish kid that he was in the last few seasons. I, I, I don't know if it's the same kid. I don't know if he lost weight, I don't know, but yeah, whatever, right? But yeah, what they did with the kid do, like like it's it's pretty much like retelling the, the karate kid story again, right? You know, um kind of naive nudie ish kid comes to, to high school and there's these kids bullying him, right? And then well he eventually joins a dojo, not gonna say which one. And he kinda learns, you know, about toughening up and all that kind of stuff, right? But where his where his arc ends though, and I'll say because yeah, we, of course you gotta get a fifth season, right? What 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 they what they um where 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 his arc stops though is like yeah I just can't wait to see what they do next though can you really see like the flip side to this whole idea of becoming strong and what that means right um so so I really dug that um but yeah I mean everything else works though um the acting the the music the music choices you know these these eighties rock songs and all that kind of stuff um what else the 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 the, the fight choreography of course is on point um. And of course, you know the, the the all the all valley tournament is just which which takes up the last two episodes of the season here is just awesome, just awesomeness from start to end. Yeah. A lot of twists, a lot of tunes, a lot of oh, a lot of oh my gods, all that kind of stuff. You will get that in this um in the season here, and especially where the season ends, it's like yeah, just like with the last season, I can't wait, right? Now, of course, um, just just before I get to written, um, this is one of those shows that really treads lightly between. You know, eighties and nineties ridiculousness and silliness. You right. know, to okay, we're in the modern age now. We we're supposed to laugh at these things, but you can kind of understand in the eighties and nineties why those things kind of mattered, right? You know, so you know, it, it kind of loves to poke fun at itself. But at the same time, I imagine some genie person might watch this and be like, okay, this is dumb. Why this character showed up here? Why this thing happened here? Why all of a sudden they have to fight now? You know, it's all it's, it's things like that now. But that's the beauty of the show. It, it just kind of knows how to how to balance, you know, the you know the the ridiculousness of the of the errors that they they pay an homage to, while they kind of modernizing, you know, the the, the same story, right? And lo- uh, modernize it and progressing it in in logical ways, right? So I really really dug that. And um, last thing last before I get to read though. Similar to the last season, though, it ends on not just one, but just like about a number of cliffhangers, though. But the last one in particular, boy, is like, okay, all right, we 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 bringing back old characters again. Okay, <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I definitely can't wait. Um, so yeah, this is another se- another great season of this show here. This is easily one of my favorite shows thus far, and um, I'm not sure how far this this show is gonna run. I think it should probably run maybe two more seasons and then end, but um. Yeah, I, I just want them to just, you know, keep maintaining that that solid, you know, smart, conscious, uh, conscientious writing and great characterization, and, you know, smart, whippy, you know, witty dialogue and, you know, of course, great fight scenes, right? So yeah, written wise, I'm going to give this, uh, yeah, strong four to like four and a half out of five, man. This is absolutely worth checking out. If you haven't jumped nice. on board the, the, the Cobra Kai hype train, jump at it it is real oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is real it is real y'all need to check this out as soon as if you haven't already 